Hey folks, this is your plasma cosmology made easy. The goal is to deliver key points to help frame the plasma picture from stars and star forming regions to the galaxy and galaxies beyond out to the large scale structure of the clusters of galaxies and interconnectedness of the cosmic web. At the end of this video, you will get a number of links for supporting information and much more. The video is the highlights. The plasma cosmology is meant to one day replace the current lambda cold dark matter paradigm. In this paradigm, dark matter dominates the physical mass of the universe that began with the Big Bang 13.7 to 13.8 billion years ago. It's simply wrong on both counts. Let's begin with the timeline. We see supermassive quasars at such early times of the universe that it genuinely challenges the physics of how they could have formed so quickly. The same goes for supermassive galaxies. They are appearing at such a size at such early times that reconciling the Big Bang timeline is troublesome. A few weeks after the film was released, Gemini and others found a galactic proto-cluster at 12 billion years of age, can tell it's been coming together for a while, and its size once again becomes challenging at that age of the universe. But perhaps the most damning evidence comes from individual stars. They say that the earliest that stars could have formed was 200 million years after the Big Bang, but there are at least two stars we know of, not just in our own galaxy, but within a thousand light years, that are as old as the Big Bang or older. Methuselah's star is thought to be 14.5 billion years old, maybe older, and is only 200 light years away. The galaxy is 100,000 light years across, so what are the chances it's the only one that exists, the only one that exists in our galaxy? Another interesting point is that most deep space background interpretations utilize Kirchhoff's Law, one of the world's experts in radiology, someone who revolutionized the MRI machine, by the way, says it is wholly invalid, and he proves it in the cosmology film. Perhaps the most obvious failure is that billions and billions of dollars for satellites, telescopes, detectors underground, lab experiments, etc. have all failed to find even one piece of dark matter. And it's not only that, but the expected places to find their effects indirectly, like the gamma ray background and in dwarf satellite galaxy configurations, just isn't there. In fact, the satellites of the Milky Way, Andromeda, and Centaurus A all violate that mainstream dark matter model. But this is only half the story. It's not enough to just identify a problem. You have to at least point in the right direction. Galactic rotation is one of the key reasons they look for dark matter. They can't account for how the outer stars and galaxies keep up with the spin when they should just be falling behind and stringing out. There isn't enough visible mass to account for their continued curved keeping pace with the rest of the galaxy. And so they blame dark matter, magic particles that don't really interact much with the normal matter we know. But, alas, there have been a number of solutions proposed, and the best one is relatively simple. You replace their huge dark matter halo around the galaxy with a real, normal, luminous matter halo that is simply too hard to detect at this stage of our technology because it is so cold, sparse, and diffuse, spread out. Now, obviously, this would work mathematically, but the problem is we don't see the stuff there. Until now. The Lost Light of Hubble was a late 2018 discovery that we heard about in January 2019. Color is the known galaxies, with black around them as the real matter halos that we already knew about. White is still black, blank space, but the gray is the recovered light, the Lost Light of Hubble. In the same space that was supposed to be occupied by dark matter to make the math work, it is instead populated by diffuse, cold, normal matter. And just when we thought that can't get any better, it was discovered that those cold, normal matter halos are co-rotating with the galaxies, aiding in the spin dynamics problem. And then Keck, Caltech, and NASA teamed up to discover that those galaxies are fed from the cosmic web in spiraling helical vortex filaments. Can't get more magnetodynamic than that. We also have seen the math work when some of the stars within the galaxy are hyperbolic, and if indeed mainstream science is right about the galactic mergers over time, why would there not be wild, high-velocity stars on hyperbolic orbits? By the way, there are. 
they have found many such high-velocity stars. Now let's step out to the cosmic web. This is where their deep space telescope dark matter searches promised the most reward and delivered the largest failure. Unless, of course, you are a plasma cosmologist. Instead of finding dark matter, they found normal matter in the cosmic web. But since it is not randomly scattered, but flowing in the cosmic web, feeding galaxies, etc., those flows represent a current of photoionized and otherwise charged material. This is where a planetary science mission that was once again ignored by mainstream cosmology really changed the game for the plasma. Cassini flew through the South Pole jets of Enceladus and detected only 5% of the electric current that we know must be there due to the magnetic fields detected. It was hidden by dust, which we also had trouble seeing initially, and if we missed it while inside it, we see nothing of the true nature of these currents in deep space. Let's come down to the random stellar level once again. It was long believed that the star-forming molecular clouds were driven by random, chaotic, gravitational collapse, but they have determined now that magnetic fields and plasma turbulence are the driving forces of the star formation rates in those regions, and that they create a fair bit of order. This was confirmed by Sophia and Alma, and we find that these forms do not take on random configurations either. They form filaments and sheets that follow local magnetic field lines. We investigated the Musca filament in the full plasma cosmology film. Of course, in addition to mainstream science unknowingly proving plasma cosmology step by step at galaxies and the cosmic web and star forming regions, we have the great claim from Dr. Anthony Peratt. He worked for the DOE. He was the top man in the country on nuclear policy for a while, but most importantly for today, he led and pushed the button on numerous nuclear bomb tests. The ones in Nevada, they buried tens of millions of dollars of detectors and sensors, and tens of millions more of supercomputers around the underground blast sites, despite their burning up in a millisecond. That was more than enough to get them the data on the high-energy plasma physics that they needed, using still-classified versions of Tristan and Tristan Prime programs that have since gone public but without the key classified items. They learned long ago you don't need dark matter from their actual bomb tests and their extrapolated works. Everything can be accounted for without the need for magic particles. Everything about those tests is still classified, except for the qualitative statements that we were allowed to present. I personally was not allowed to even hear anything more. If you haven't seen the full Plasma Cosmology video, or you need to watch it again, it is linked for you below. We also have Dr. Perrette's book linked below and some good websites. Those professors from the full video and Dr. Perrette gave their time and took courage to speak. Please lend them your time and support as well. At spaceweathernews.com slash plasma, we have much of this information in readable form, including an updating list of latest discoveries at the bottom. We have been updating as they come out and will continue to do so. Be safe, everyone.